A young son of one of Jehovah's Witnesses refused to salute the American flag. The press had much to say about it. The Associated Press requested a statement from me to which I respond in brief. The flag stands for or represents the ruling power. It attributes to that power protection and salvation for the people. The formalism of saluting the flag is a religious ceremony which gives adoration to the creature or thing and which is therefore contrary to God's law. Any form of ceremony performed contrary to the law of God is detrimental to the creature and a dishonor to God's name. To those who please God, he gives this positive commandment to it, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, nor any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. God gives this law to man for man's benefit, because the devil is trying to turn all men away from God and into destruction. Flag saluting may mean little or nothing to some persons, but it means much to one who has consecrated himself to do the will of God. The saluting of the flag is making it an image of the power to which one looks for salvation. The attempt to compel children to salute the flag is positively wrong for the reason it fixes in the mind of the child an image or power that ignores Almighty God from whom salvation alone proceeds. No state has authority by law to compel the people to do that which is injurious to them in the sight of God. If any person desires to salute a flag and does so, that is his affair and no one can object. If anyone is consecrated to do the will of God and yields to any power or influence that leads him to violate God's law, he thereby brings himself into jeopardy. One who relies upon the power of man for his salvation is certain not to receive God's protection. In the third chapter of Daniel's prophecy is recorded a case directly in point and is a striking example serving as a guide to those who love God. The king of Babylon made an image and set it up in a public place and assembled the people before it. The command was given that when the band played the national hymn, all people should fall down and worship that golden image, and that all who refused to do so should be cast into the fiery furnace. The Hebrews were in captivity at Babylon. They trusted God, and for them to bow down to a man-made image would be unfaithfulness to God. The image was erected as a conspiracy to bring about the destruction of those men devoted to God. Three faithful servants of God there refused to bow down to the image. Replying to the demand that they should bow down, they said to the king, We have no need to obey you in this matter. And if be that you cast us into the fire furnace, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the fire, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. We will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image. Those three faithful Hebrews bound and cast into the fire furnace because of their refusal to obey that law, and God delivered them because of their faithfulness to him, not even their clothes being scorched by the fire. In like manner, there is a conspiracy today formed by a certain religious organization back of which is the devil, to bring about the destruction of those who will not obey an unrighteous rule. They have hit upon the scheme of displaying the flag and compelling the children to salute it, and when children who are taught to love God and serve him refuse to salute, they suffer cruel punishment. In Germany, the people are commanded to salute the flag and say, Heil Hitler, which means salvation proceeds from Hitler. And that is a blasphemy of God's name because... From God alone comes salvation. In the United States, the same religious organization that created the Nazis, that have terrorized Germany and are trying to coerce the people of America to be obedient to their ideas, are else suffer for punishment. And that religious organization employs and has employed in the times past a wicked inquisition in Europe and Mexico to force the people to obey its views. The people should not forget the history of the wicked inquisition and the suffering it entails. Compulsory flag saluting leads to the same thing. Compulsory saluting the flag will not make good men and women, but rather will provoke in them contempt for the power that indulges in such. 
The people of America have gotten along well for 150 years without compulsive flag salute. Shotgun methods will never make good men and women. Teach the children to honor and serve God and Christ Jesus, and they will not go wrong. Refusing to salute the flag because one believes on and serves God and Christ Jesus is not disrespect to the flag or to the country, but is a proper respect and obedience to Almighty God. Each one must decide whether he will obey God or man. Jehovah's Witnesses are those who have agreed to follow in the footsteps of Jesus in obedience to God's law. They diligently comply with the law laid down by Jesus and willingly render unto the state the things that belong to the state and to God that which belongs to God. They will not violate any of the laws of the state that are in harmony with God's law. But if the law of the state is in direct violation of God's law, they will obey God's law first and all the time. In doing this, they follow exactly the lead of the apostles of Jesus. Those faithful men in obedience to the Lord's commandment went about preaching the gospel to the people. The state authority made a law compelling the apostles to cease their preaching. They continued, however, and for that reason were arrested and brought into court. In their defense before the court, they said, as recorded in Acts 4, whether it be right in the sight of God for us to hearken unto you more than to God, judge ye. We ought to obey God rather than men. All true Christians today take that very same stand. Instead of saluting some worldly flag and thus ascribing salvation to some earthly power, the true followers of Christ Jesus, including Jehovah's Witnesses and the great multitude, ascribe salvation to God and Christ. At Revelation 7, the great multitude is shown standing approved before the throne of the Lord, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all of Jehovah's Witnesses and the angels of heaven are shown as saying, Amen. Blessing and power be unto God forever. The true followers of Christ Jesus have no objection to any person saluting a flag who desires to do so. As for themselves, however, they have undertaken to serve God and will obey Him. They fulfill their obligation by teaching their children to do likewise. Men have organized the nations of the world and failing or refusing to give heed to God's word have fallen under the influence of the devil and therefore it is written in 1 John 5 the whole world lies in the wicked one Satan. Jesus with authority stated that the devil is the invisible ruler of the world. He said concerning himself my kingdom is not of this world. The true followers of Christ recognize his kingdom as their hope and they must and will obey his law. All persons who ever get life must be obedient to God and Christ. The flags of the nations of earth are not the flags of God and his kingdom, and they ascribe salvation to earthly powers and to compel such flags to be saluted is compelling persons to violate God's law which is supreme. The Lord caused his prophet to propound this question in behalf of those who have agreed to do God's will. Shall those which frame mischief by law have fellowship with thee? Religious organizations that indulge in politics frame unjust laws which work injury to others. Concerning such the Lord God says at Psalms 94, they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord is my defense, and my God is the rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness, yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. For centuries Satan has employed religious organizations and the formal practice of religious ceremonies in order to gain complete control of mankind and turn them away from God. The great and final climax is now at hand, in which every person must take one side or the other, and only those who take and hold a firm position on the side of God and his kingdom will receive the blessings of life. Never before have the people been in such dire need of knowledge and understanding of God's word as at the present time. Jehovah's Witnesses, by God's grace, are trying to get this information to the people. And Satan and his agents are doing everything possible to keep the truth from the people. Instead of the schools giving time and attention to the formalism of saluting the flag, they should give attention to the study and understanding of God's word that the children may be guided in the right way. Men must be consistent in order to teach the children honesty, 
children, because they love and serve God, refuse to salute the flag and are severely whipped to make them good citizens. The President of the United States swears to uphold the Constitution. The Supreme Court decides that he has violated his oath by going contrary to the Constitution. The President denounces the Supreme Court and relegates the Constitution to the horse and buggy days. And many applaud his action. If his solemn oath will not compel the President to obey the law, how much good will be accomplished by using physical force to compel God-fearing children to salute the flag? Public officials manifest inconsistency and Rome loves to have it so.